What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Owen Adams Music Live Show. My name is Owen Adams, and I'm your host this evening. And this is my wonderful uh, co-host, guest musician, featured artist, the great, the one and only, Howard Funkyfoot Brooks. How are you doing, Howard? What's going on, man? How you feel? All right, man. Pretty good. So you're one of my favorite drummers on the entire planet. You're one of these guys that when I get called for a gig and you're going to be on the kit, I'm like, yes. Like, <laughs> not just because you're fun to play with, because you're one of these drummers that really listens to what's going on and you like try to kick off of little rhythmic stuff that I'm doing, but also because it's just really fun to listen to your style and like your technique and all of that goodness. Let's start here. How have you been doing? And I ask this to everybody. How have you been doing since the lockdown virus situation? How is that going? Well, you know, things are slow musically, you know, but uh, just shedding, you know, keep getting a positive outlook on everything. Right. Um, keeping my mask <laughs> so I can stay healthy, you know. Um, nice virtue signaling because I don't have mine. <laughs> Anyway, so so yeah, continue. How are you doing? You so, said you're doing a lot of shedding. Play. You said you're yeah, playing man. with tracks and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, man. Doing doing a lot of shedding, man. Um, doing a lot of tracks with clicks, and, and also without clicks, um, making my own sound as well. You know, I make my own tracks as well. Um, recording things of nature. You know, now it's more of a of a send me the music, I send it back to you thing. You know, so nothing's it's person to person. Everything's Zoom or you know, this this social media thing is happening. Right. You know, playing. Well, that's why I think it's cool that we do still do stuff like this where we're still in person to person. Sure. Um, and, you know, of course, I make sure that people that come here are safe and asymptomatic and all of that. Um, no fevers and, and whatnot. But I just I crave that like one on one interaction so much. And unfortunately, nowadays, it's about the maximum number of musicians that I get to play with at a given moment is one. Right, right. Uh, but I'm so happy that you're here, man. Thank hey, you for coming through. I'm glad you gave me the call, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> well, we're going to get to hear you play your amazing, crazy chops and, and fills and stuff, but, but also your great like feel and pocket a little bit later. Okay. But first, you mentioned shedding. Now, this is a word that a lot of musicians use and a word that a lot of musicians maybe don't fully understand. What is shedding to you? When you say, I'm shedding, what does that actually mean? Shedding is basically practicing, you know, your your drums, your guitar, whatever, well, whatever you into. You right. Know? Um, for me, I practice certain beats, certain time signatures, uh, listen to other drummers and different music, musical influences, man, that maybe guide me a different way and then I can learn from that you know and take back from the older uh fusion or, or hip-hop or R&B stuff and try to pull it in at home or you mm. know and try to find a find that groove you know and try to pocket with that groove and then you know when so you're in a situation where you're playing whatever music is going to be you know whatever type of genre of music you're going to play right um you're able to play that music so I tell a lot of uh, students I used to have, and I did a clinic, my music school, music store way back in the day, right? Okay. When so questions was asked, you know, what should I do as a drummer? What should I learn? What should I practice? What should I listen to? Mm -hmm. I tell them everything, <laughs> right? You know, because you never know what kind of call is going to come through. You know, you you try to master everything that you can master, but you always going to find that one niche that you're into. Mm -hmm. That's going to set you apart from others, you know, because a lot of drums now, they try to sound the same. Or they try to mimic another drummer, which is cool. Yeah. But then once you learn that, you want to put it in your own vein, your mm -hmm. own way, you know, speak yourself. You know? Well, let's dive into that a little more deeply, because what's your actual process when you sit down at the kit? Um, because what you're saying probably makes sense to drummers that have been around the block a little bit. All musicians who are a little mm -hmm. more experienced are like, all right, listen to everything. Well, that, so I kind of already understand like where my uh, musical 
sort of focus lies. Mm-hmm. And then when you say everything, it's like, okay, we'll break out of that a little bit. But for somebody that doesn't know that, like, what do you actually do when you sit down on the kit to practice? Like, are you really going to find like a bluegrass song or like a heavy metal song or like, what do you like? What's your first step there? Do you just want to find a good song or a good uh, stem to play to? Like, what do you? What's okay. your goal when you go to sit down? You say, "I'm going to practice today." What's the first step there? Well, the first thing I do is trying to find the two and the four, you know, and have you on that one, you know. Right. Um, that's a PFO thing. That's a James Brown thing, really. Mm-hmm. The Bootsy, you know, on to that the PFO era, you know, and it, and it went from Prince and it went on and on. So have having that funky one. You know, but that two and four is where you want to start from. That's your basis. Mm. People want to hear that pulse. So, you know, if, if that pulse is going, people are dancing, then you, don't, then, then you know you're doing the right thing. If they're not dancing, then you know you're missing that. Yeah. That season. That season song. Yeah, something. well, you just said a real deep secret there, which is that it's about the one, the two, and the four. And, like, so many drummers are obsessed with, oh, how can I get this 45-stroke roll into my fill without getting fired from the gig, right? Sure. But so what, what's your process for finding that, that simple, like, the pocket, the one, like you said? Like, what are you listening for when you play back the track? Are you actually counting along with it? Do you have any tricks for how you really figure that out? And then what about when you have like odd time signatures? How do you find the one there? Well, you could do a five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Your one is there. Right. So you do so do you beat one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. That that's your one. If you're doing a two and a four, it's one, two, three, four. You know, mm-hmm. so you and back to your one. Most folks, well, a lot of drummers I've seen, and uh, let's say beginning drummers, from the beginners, um, their timing is not there. I've been through it. Everyone's been through it. From right. guitar players, bass players, the drummers to any musician. Mm-hmm. Timing. So that's that's the first thing you need, you need to uh, concentrate on is timing. If you can count to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and still keep that, and go back to that one again. You know, so there's always a one. Then, right? always, there's always, always a, one. Be a one. There's always one. And be a like one. I've heard situations too with with multi time signatures where you're hearing something that sounds like it is kind of in five, but then there's a there there might be a weird accent offbeat somewhere mm-hmm. here or there. And then a, a trick I like to use for that is count twice as fast too, because mm-hmm. instead of just counting the trying to find it in a big beat, it mm-hmm. might be subdivided in a weird way where you sure. just have to count instead of one, two, three, counting one, two, three. So exactly sure. double it. Sure. Um, it actually, it, it, it reminds me of a funny story um, when I was playing with Stravagant and we had a section, crazy like uh, uh, progressive rock, jazz fusion stuff. And we had a section at the end of the song that was in like 13, eight or something. And the way we found out to count it was like this. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So instead of right. saying seven, we right. said seven, one, and it yeah. always showed you where that the one, one was, was. going to be, mm-hmm. right? And it's exactly like in the middle of that beat there. So sure. basically, so there's, there's always a one. There's always a yeah. downbeat that you should yeah. be able to grasp. And sure. if you're struggling with that in four, four, then maybe stay, stick with that for a little bit longer, right? right? right. What about this? In 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 this similar kind of vein, how do you practice getting a lot of like mastery over your dynamics? Because the drums don't have pitch really. I mean, it's like a fixed pitch, right? But mm-hmm. you have dynamics, and I think that means that the dynamic becomes way more important, does it not? Well, let let me say. Well, drums you can pitch a drum to a note. Right. Right. Okay. So far it's hard to play a C chord on a snare drum, though, isn't it? Like no, but <laughs> as well, you can't play chords, but you can play the note. Yeah, right. right so right. I can tune Tom to a, a C to a D, whatever. Sometimes some some drums that are made are made are actually tuned to a pitch of a note. Well, your Tom better be in the right key later. I now. hope so. I hope so. <laughs> but uh, with that in mind, your colors, I, I can say colors in the music, mm-hmm. or your season song, so to speak, whatever season they put a little sprinkle on there. The swells and your and just hearing the music per se, I'm, I'm the kind of person that listen to 
all the parts of the music first mm-hmm. before the drum part. Well, and then you also mentioned ghost notes too. I mean, yeah. isn't that the whole point of a ghost is that it's it's light, it's like kind of see through, it's well, barely it's, there, right? It's it's just something just to add a little flavor, mm-hmm. you know. Um, for me, and I know a lot of drummers are now just laying back, playing a little bit, you know, add a little flavor to it, um, and no personality to it. But, you know, growing up, listen to, you know, the Dennis Chambers, you know, George Gray, Larry Bright, you know, hanging with those guys at Grangers, um, I'll go on and on and on. Um, and then get to the young cats or the cats that, that, that I, my, my counterpart, so to speak, you know, um, the, the uh, Mark, Mark St. Pierre's, the Mark Stewart's, you had the, the Lester Wallace, you had the um, Spider, you know, you have a lot of drummers here, Re- Rear Foots up in D.C., Trusty, you know, so it's so, so a couple other drummers that that has their own flavor, their own signature, right. so, so to speak. But we all, I think, trying to get to a place where we're comfortable, where we find our niche, we find our own personality. Because no one sounds the same. Right. You know. Um, and I see a lot of drummers now trying to sound the same. Mm-hmm. They sound like a part. I mean, we all have done that. You know, I've been a student of Dennis and Billy Cobb, Ham, um, Dave Ruckel, you know, you Lenny White, you, you know. So you go to listen, listen to those guys trying to emulate or try to at least try to find a level of where they are. You know, I had uncles that was bass player, you know, so... I hung out with him, and I met all those Baltimore legends, you know, and right. been been the kid growing up. You know, I was everywhere, trying to play the keys, I was trying to play the bass, I was trying to play whatever I can play, you know, and it worked out, you know. I can play bass, I can play, I can play keys. So, but my mastery is the drums. Mm. But um, with that in mind, man, you know, influences is great. Now, did you play, were you le- learning the drums and the keyboards at the same time, or did you start learning one sooner than later? I think I've learned to play drums and percussion first. Okay. Then I went on to play bass. You know, I like to, my uncle play bass. I was always jump, I jumped on his bass, you know? <laughs> so this was going to be my question then. You started drums first, then you picked up some bass and some keyboards, some other stuff. Mm-hmm. How did your conception of playing drums change after you started learning these sure. other instruments, like did you pick up a specific thing from playing bass and then another thing from learning keyboards, or did it all kind of gel together? What was your experience well, with that? For me, once you learned the instrument besides just a drum and learned the bass, you figured what structure the bass player is playing or where his pocket is. Mm-hmm. Then, because bass and drums is 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 it's neck to neck, they have to lock together. Yeah. If you ever go in the studio, have an opportunity to go in the studio, um, beginners or you know musicians that that's, that's trying to get to, to that realm, the the main part or any scratch uh, recording is the bass and drum. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and once they lock, they can play all around that. Of course, you know? yeah. So that's the basis right there. That's that's the bottom, you know. Then the rhythm section comes in, then your chords, and, you know, and you know, your hooks and all that good stuff. So for me, uh, learning these instruments and um, getting to understand made me a better drummer because now, not just a drummer, I am now a musician, so to speak. I listen to everything that's going on. Right. And in listening, I can understand why the keyboard player is doing this, why this lick is here, why this lick is coming in and we change to this part or this bridge, mm. that mode, you know? So just listening. Is, is, is the key. Yeah, well, I, I kind of think of it like this, too. When the drum and the bass player are locked in, especially, like, specifically the kick drum, right, the bass drum mm-hmm. and the bass player are, like, right on the perfect wavelength, it almost sounds like it's the same instrument, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, you don't yeah. notice that there's two instruments there. It just kind of sounds like a, a bass guitar with a really loud, like, smack in the front of it. Yeah, well, like, like um, Rufus, Shot Your Khan. Yeah. You know, a song called Do You Love What You Feel? Boom, 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 boom. The bass player and the drummers is locking. Yeah. It's a lock there. Yeah. Actually, two weeks ago, I, I put it on. I was like, let me, let me play along with this, <laughs> this, this song because it's been so long. But I, then it's like, now I get it. But I was a kid when it was out. Right. I didn't get it. Yeah. I played it, but I didn't get it. And now you can appreciate when appreciate stuff is what's... really locked oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. But, it's, but that's also kind of a double edged sword, isn't it? Because, <laughs> because then you can. 
then you start to really get annoyed when stuff is not perfectly locked in, right? Which, which is, is, good, is a good thing, but maybe not for you because you end up being more annoyed with <laughs> amateur musicians. HowardFunkyFootBrooks.com, correct? Yes, yes, I, I did. remembered it. That's ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> and go there. Check out the um, – you got videos. You got songs. You got uh, music. Read this guy's bio. There's some incredible stuff there about you know the, the clinics and the other musicians you've played with. Eugene's yeah. on there. Um, and you got some great photos too, man. You got yeah, some thanks, great man. photography going thanks, on. Thanks, man. I um well, you know, I'm with the uh Trexas Symbol Company, um, which is ww.trexasymbols USA. Uh you'll see my bio on there. It's great, great stuff. Uh, I went to NAN one year and um shopped around, you know. You know, there's so much things to do. It's, it's like candy store. It's like a toy shop there, you know. It went on from there because I met a guy named Jamal Turner. He's from Baltimore. He also, he's an artist as well, endorsed artist there. And um, him and I talked off and on. He came to see me play a couple times. He's one of their East Coast reps. So by him seeing me play, and that's how I got on. He liked mm. what I was doing. I liked, they liked how I was sounding. Like my personality and what I brought to the table, you know. And when you bring something to the table that's going to further the company, it's a good thing. So many guys are just like, oh, yeah, I endorse this person and I endorse this person. Oh, I endorse Roland and I endorse Yamaha. Da, da, da. And like you never really hear how that happens. And everybody makes it sound like, oh, I'm so lucky because I'm the great one. And, you know, they're lucky to have me. But you're just such a humble guy and just such a nice guy. You're like, you don't you said it. You don't expect anything. No, you're just yeah. going to make a friend. And if nothing happens, hey, nothing happens. You're not mad. You're not disappointed. Uh, if something happens, hey, beautiful. You're not trying to take advantage. You're not trying to like. Uh, commandeer the situation and like right. always come out on top and, and always be uh, get something for the time you put in. Like uh, it, to me, I, I look at the music business as you have to give something first before you ever expect to get anything in return. Like if you just want to get free gear and money, mm -hmm. this is not <laughs> the hustle for you. All right. So, but that's so awesome, man. You're, you're on fire and we're going to get ready to jam in a second. Before we do that, don't forget to hit that like button. If you're feeling our threads, if you're feeling Howard's funky scarf over there and the, the, the beanie and the, the style and the very loud, way too loud jacket that I'm wearing here, definitely leave a comment down below if you have any questions for Mr. Howard Funkyfoot. That is the interview portion of the show, but don't go anywhere because we're going to do a funky jam session. We got some kind of glitch hop, uh, trip hop, neo soul stuff, some flying lotus, Sam I am, Jay Dilla flavored type stuff coming up later. And uh, gonna we're going to get set up and get turn on the drum mics and uh, set up the keyboard and stuff. And we will be back in just a second.